Thank you. Thanks for the intro uh, and uh, welcome to KCD Chennai. And uh, I know that you guys are uh, busy with Saturday course, but still, uh, thanks for taking your time to attend this uh, fantastic event organized by KCD team. And uh, I'm very excited to present you guys about uh, talk about deconstructing Kubernetes for networking and uh, knowledge profit, or you, know, you can call it as a profit, right? So this is based on the uh, Microsoft internal training. Uh, presented by Stephen Griffith. Uh, we enjoyed this training and I found it, it's very useful for me personally. So I thought, uh, you know, why don't I share this information to the outside world? And um, the most of the things are all open to Kubernetes and wherever you see AKS, I try to keep it as uh, neutral, but some places you might see AKS, let's say the VMS scale set or AKS, but still the commands and the constructs or the concepts are same across the Kubernetes, right? And uh, Let's, let's proceed with the sessions. Uh, since we have a uh, 40 plus slides, I'm trying to condense into 25 minutes session and then see how best I can, you know, um, responsible on this provided time. And the session objective is, you know, I'll set the context by introducing the um, layers around the Kubernetes and starting with the, um, what is parts, what is services, what is components on around the networking. And then, you know, we'll dive into the, some of the networking constructs, like, you know, how uh, one can approach the networking problems or solely uh, issues when you're not attempting to troubleshoot, right? And then quickly, I'll walk you through with the steps and uh, the tools I used over the period of time to achieve the uh, required uh, findings or maybe the uh, uh, solution to make it work. See, the, all the tools and the steps are, you know, put it in a graphical way. The reason is in the present time, it's so difficult to set up the whole thing and record assets. And um, Kubernetes network, uh, first of all we have to agree that uh, accept that kubernetes is hard right uh, it's not like i'm a certified i'm a master in the kubernetes area right so we have to accept the fact that kubernetes is hard but network isn't a uh, magic and also network is also equally hard and we see many people shy away discussing about the networking concepts uh, because of the complexity involved and uh, at the end of the day uh, it's all boiled down to you know a simple ip tables and uh, build with you know, a lot of overlay networking concepts around the IP tables and then we have the CNI or maybe Kubernetes you call and we will we'll, uh, deconstruct the whole thing in uh, coming slides. Let me check. Okay. So the Kubernetes networking as a the key concepts are, all, I mean, I'm going to cover the, some of those key concepts, right? So the first thing, the fundamental thing is about the kubelet. Uh, this kubelet is responsible or the agents or demons are responsible for certain things, right? So there are like 145 plus parameters you see. Uh, but in the after the docker stream removal in 1.24 it is expected to have 120 parameters but still it is a huge but so if you um, ssh into one of the nodes one of the kubernetes nodes uh, using the ps command you can see this you know what is the network plugin used in the underlying architecture right so you see that briefly uh, in the diagram you see a network plugin as a kubenet in this case whereas a uh, uh, you would also see this you know cni from the respective provider if it is an aks then azure cni or a uh, other provider also will have the equivalent, you know, uh, CLM, uh, you name any provider. I think there are like 15, 20 providers who provide a CNI network on top of uh, uh, the default networking. And these agents and the, no the node agents of Kubelet is responsible uh, for various things. And I, I suggest you know take time to go through it and then uh, we'll proceed with, you know, how you can actually log into one of the RSSG into one of the nodes. The commands are same still, uh, maybe the cloud provider is different, but the commands are same. And you could use one of those in you know, a box and then try to uh, run a, a spin, a, you know, a troubleshooting um, uh, the container. What I see the MCR at Microsoft.net runtime. There is an image which I'm using to troubleshoot. And then you can run the top command or add top command and then see uh, the container D. Uh, these are the some of these you know, agents in the kubelet also. You will find it as a first thing here. And you will find other agents are equally running, you know, in those uh, machines. And those are like run as a demon set or a, sorry, the agent or a process. So they are it's responsible for certain uh, networking concepts, which we'll see uh, in a moment. And the key con components around the Kubernetes networking, uh, it's, it's all most, I mean, most mostly revolves around Kubernetes or CNI, right? Uh, by default, we started with the Kubernetes when the Kubernetes started, but uh, over the period of time, uh, due to the limitation with the Kubernetes, uh, we, now we are branching towards the CNI or a layer on top of uh, the default one and the respective providers like you see, uh, the Azure has got their own and GCP, AWS, and VMware, and Cilium. And uh, there are like, as I said, right, the 20 plus uh, networking uh, layers or CNI plugins are available to achieve the, some robust uh, uh, networking concepts around, you know, uh, the, the default one. 
and uh, the parts actually it's been uh, talked a while parts are the fundamental constructs are maybe the low level uh, compute execution of your application and um, it's it's all uh, uh, it could it can have a multiple uh, container or maybe as a side card proxy yesterday we talked about uh, uh, service mesh you know as a side card proxy so these parts are responsible to run a container manage these containers and also manage the uh, ip address for these containers so and then we'll jump into the services also services also uh, so if you look at the the way the, uh, the slides are organized right so i'm trying to get deeper and deeper and then show you the you know how you can actually uh, slice and dice these uh, networking concepts so when we drill down to the service level service levels you know there are four types of services cluster ip node port and the load balancer and external name and i believe there are one more is also there but there are four basically uh, four types of majorly you know used thing these are like it, it operates in the uh, layer four uh, it means that it's it doesn't know anything about the application in the back end right it it's it does what has been uh, prescribed here let's say if i create a cluster ip it gives an ip of you know cluster to private ip in the cluster to work with that. and also if i spin a, if i define as a load balancer it gives me a, a a public ip from the respective load balancer i mean sorry cloud providers load balancer and then and it's kind of abstraction and you should know uh, how to run this command as a cube ctl get svc would take, take you there and then um, the 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 second one i mean the the next one is the endpoints when you run the command like a kubectl endpoints and uh, parts command you know, dash uh, o dot wide uh, you would see the uh, the back and the fr i mean back is having a single ip address or endpoints whereas the front has got a, a four different parts uh, and the, there are like you know four different copies of the parts and then you see that uh, uh, the, the ip address are you know in the range of uh, 10.24 I mean, the, the idea here is you know, it matches the endpoints, what we see it in the command and also the parts, what's been assigned from the Kubernetes, right? So, so how this matching has happened? I think if you look at the notes I provided, I see a, it's a quick reminder. So when you define an YAML file in the uh, selector label, it's try to associate this, uh, uh, this endpoints with the you know, IP address, what we have. Uh, and uh, Ingress, actually, this works in uh, layer seven. Um, it's been talked a while. I think a lot of ingress uh, available in the Kubernetes space, and, um, and if you see that the ingress control by default we in Azure we provide Azure uh, uh, application gateway ingress controller. You have a choice to run nginx as an ingress or a traffic or envoy. Uh, this will uh, essentially will help you to uh, route the traffic in a designated way. It works in the application layer. That's very important concepts you should be aware of in the Kubernetes networking. And then um, let's deep dive. Um, assume that you are uh, you are an SRE or a development, uh, I'm sorry, in the, in, the, in the DevOps engineer, you are going to debug some issues, right? So first thing that the, the networking concept starts with, you know, the YAML spec, what you see, uh, what is the port, what is the IP address defined, how these uh, selectors and labels are, you know, mapped each other, right? So in the right side, there is a kind of a service which has been created for the deployment. Uh, in the bottom, they say there is a selector labels, which matching is as, you know, Flask application dash A, right? So, so the service has been uh, created on top of this container or uh, this part. The replica set is nothing but the copy of your part. And they, and then if you see, uh, uh, this one, one fine day you get an issue saying that, hey, I'm trying to do a curl command. Um, maybe in the left side you see it's working fine, but then in the right side uh, it's failing, right? So one of the part is failing to, um, uh, you know, maybe uh, respond in a way that it's showing as an operation timed out, right? So it is a normal thing which you uh, might have seen or come across. So the the, the, the thing I'm trying to say here is you know, how would you approach this problem or troubleshoot this? Um, let's let's uh, deep dive and then see. In a high level, if you look at, uh, uh, I mean, there's one thing you have to be very aware here is the KubeNet, uh, you will not, uh, I mean, in KubeNet, you will find route tables created by default. Uh, and then, but in case of a CNI networking, and uh, uh, you, you will not see that route tables created, right? I mean, you have to be very, uh, mindful about whether you are troubleshooting a kubenet issue or a plugin or a cni plugin right so based on that the the underlying network stack of the the, the approach would differ so in, in this case of uh, i mean in this case i mean here in this case we are trying to uh, check what are the i mean various knobs of in the, the networking complexities the fundamentals are same again don't carry it away by the screenshot of uh, azure or AKs, but so when you get into the system or when you get in i mean when you look at the resources what has been created by the managed provider you have to check the default route uh, that's going via the firewall or it's getting blocked by uh, certain things, right? You always have an, a, a, 
networking concepts defined i mean the route tables configured to uh, separately for ingress and egress so make sure that you know they, there is no overlapping ips are created this is one of the i mean these are like uh, some of the checkpoints you try to check but when you further uh, deep down to check right so there isn't there shouldn't be an nsg created or associated to the uh, uh, the vnet by default when you uh, create a, a cluster in the you know uh, cube net right in the left hand side left hand side in the, in the cube net i mean the left hand, left hand side is you know the cube net by default you see that the energies are attached to the subnet but where in case of uh, cni you know it's been attached to some time in the vnet or in the node level right so make sure uh, nothing has been assigned to the uh, subnet so the, the default setting of the subnet sorry nsg changes depends on the uh, the, the plugin what you choose make sure these you know energies are not assigned or maybe propagate to the top to bottom uh, make sure you know the energies are not blocking your access right we when you when you drill down further uh, this is again the one more view of to you know, to check it in the azure so you go to the uh, the particular resource group and then see whether the NSGs have been uh, you know blocking that access endpoints and then it's confirmed that uh, uh, it doesn't seems to be blocking anything and then let's deep dive into cluster by you know get into that machine and then start troubleshooting actually what is actually stopping that uh, curl command which we try to troubleshoot so far we were troubleshooting or maybe looking at uh, what's outside of the cluster by looking in the portal nsg or maybe uh, you know the definition what we set in the you know start of the cluster in the spark spec and other thing but in case of uh, when we get into the cluster and you have to make sure uh, the, the, the fundamental concepts as like you know the uh, the cube net versus cni the concepts are clear right see as i as i said uh, the cni in in cni uh, you will not you will not see the route table created but in case of a cube net you will see the route tables created to make sure you know the things are in proper and also the these are like kind of a definition i mean maybe the a difference but i'm sure that most of the things are same as you know even though the providers are different and um, uh, yeah one thing actually i want to say here uh, um, the networks, I mean, the, the cube net, uh, the fundamentally the cube nets are, uh, the, the network constructs are put in a way that, you know, it's, it's actually nothing but an overlay on top of your, uh, the network provided by the uh, nodes. And in case of CNI, uh, you can define a, a range of a subnet range and also you have a flexibility to uh, set, you know, let's say if you are setting a, a 30 IP address per node and plus uh, one node, one IP for that particular node, the 31 IP address, Fundamentally, the CNI would operate within that range, but in case of next version of CNI, I believe the dynamic allocation of uh, IP address is also coming in picture. So, I think we are we are most. I mean, the, the focus here is mostly into uh, CNI because uh, I mean, if you look at the KubeNet, it's KubeNet. Maybe we all started uh, playing with the KubeNet, but when you get into the production grade application, the CNI is what uh, I see or we see are mostly used or majorly considered, right? The CNI version two, which is going to be a more dynamic allocation. So I encourage to check uh, CNI version two also, and then um, so as I I mean as we discussed the cube net versus Azure CNI in the first uh, diagram in the top in the top most when the node IP address is like 10.10.5.04, uh, 5.4 has been uh, uh, that, that's your uh, node's IP address. But in case of uh, I need actually okay yeah so the the parts I mean for the uh, Azure CNI the uh, IP address are assigned from the subnet CIDR. You can see that 10. Dot, uh, I mean, you can see the difference. Like there's a 10, 24 in the top, whereas the 10. Dot 10 is in the bottom. And similarly for the uh, service side, and the, the service side also it changes. Um, but the external load balance that remains same. Uh, both are going to be having in you know, the same. Uh, it's just a public IP address. Right? At the end of the day, it's a public IP address. The moment you create a, a service type as a load balancer, you get a public IP address, and then there's no difference here. Um, let's let's get into the uh, what's actually happening right when we do a curl command like here uh, you, you i mean we got an operation timed out right this is a problem statement we are trying to troubleshoot so so that's a public ip address you can uh, make sure the public ip address from the respective providers are in a proper and in the right format but in the in this case you know we are troubleshooting with the um, aks cluster so uh, i'm i'm trying to make sure the azure load balance are you know functional and also properly configured and the ports are listening and then 5000 is a port where we are trouble, uh, trying to reach. And then uh, in the, the side by side in the screenshot, you see 5000 is also configured. Backend is also 5000. The uh, this, this slide, I think, I mean, the, from the Kubernetes view, Kubernetes, I mean, doesn't understand whether you are running in uh, uh, 
I mean, operating with the AKs or EKs, right? It, it works in a way that because it's a, all other things are put it, uh, as an abstraction or layer around to Kubernetes are extended. So the Kubernetes view, uh, you will see these load balance are having the uh, public, um, IP address and also ports with the uh, incoming and outgoing and then external IP. Um, so that's a service view. And uh, the Linux view, if you SSH into the uh, SSH into one of the machine, uh, what is the Linux kernel view looks like for those? Uh, so the, if you do a pseudo IP tables of dash T and NAT uh, dash NL and cube services grab off for that application, you will see that uh, the daemon set and the tool chains, so there are multiple tool chains and then finally it reaches the uh, destination of 2081. That is our load balancer IP, right? So we are trying to see uh, uh, what, I mean, how many tool signs are, you know, how many uh, hops it takes to, not hops actually, the, the uh, the tool signs are involved to reach the destination. If there, are, if you introduce an additional uh, NVA, and then you would see that additional uh, tool chains also gets added here. Um, from the Kubernetes view, and if you do the service endpoints and service, and you will see that uh, things are matching and the ports 5000 is what we are looking, trying to reach, and which is all properly configured. And then um, again with the uh, Kubernetes view, and then um, from the endpoints, it actually reaches the our managed cluster here. Um, the AKS node, right? So the AKS, inside the AKS node, there is a part. And then when we do this uh, kubectl get endpoints and come apart, you see that uh, the IP address of uh, the endpoints and ports assigned IP address are matching. So, so far, uh, good. And then uh, get into the Linux view, uh, kernel view. And similarly in the Linux tables, I mean, when you, I mean, the same uh, Linux node, when you try to do this IP tables and then the commands of kube service uh, with some certain hash, you will see that uh, uh, the the cube dash zip, which is actually matching with the IP tables of what is that NAT listed, right? And also the pod IP is also uh, precisely matching. Uh, that is a that's a, a destination we are trying to uh, put the traffic to, right? And then um, there's an another view. Uh, so when you do the CRI CTL PS, you will see that the container name, that Flask application, which you are trying to curl, uh, having the hash of container name, and then you can also uh, CRI CTL. Uh, inspect dash dash output and then go to the template of the particular container id and then uh, try to see that you know what's actually the loopback address and other thing by the way these uh, i will share the slide these comments are uh, properly put it in a way that you know you can try to do the same thing on your own i'll put it in my uh, github so that you can grab the slide and then uh, uh, all these steps are you know we are trying to get deeper and deeper and then um, it's okay uh, uh, so, so far, good. Um, have you have you confirmed our? I mean, does it work in a way we expected? No. Still the, um, still the, you know the the timeout issues are happening, and then uh, we see that the uh, we are trying to get into the machine, and also we confirm that, and we ran some commands, and then we confirm that things are fine, and then there is no firewall issues, and there is no uh, NSG issues here, and we looked in the kernel view. Sorry, the the Linux kernel view. Looked in the uh, Azure view or a provider view. Uh, we looked from the uh, kubectl uh, endpoints and service view, and uh, but still the uh, nodes are not receiving traffic, right? So, I mean the the timeout issues, I mean the time out errors are not uh, uh, getting solved, right? And there's one more avenue we can check. Uh, we can also check with the load balancer metrics uh, whether the to the particular part which is running inside the uh, the cluster which is you know receiving the traffic or not, right? And you see that in the load balancer metrics in the bottom towards the bottom, there are like a couple of uh, uh, red marks are there right? that shows that and uh, there's somewhere, you know, something is breaking with the load balancer. I mean, the traffic is not actually really hitting the load balancer or reaching the load balancer, right? So we could also use the, I mean, we can now use the tools like a Wireshark. And by the way, in the Wireshark is the UI version, but when, when we use the T-Shark, which is equivalent to the command line version of Wireshark, uh, we'll be able to, uh, specifically set filters, let's say uh, when we, uh, uh, right now we are doing a curl command, that's okay, but we can actually set the commands like, you know, the HTTP request that method is a get method if you are interested. And then um, the, uh, the, the ports, you know, there's a source port, destination port, and um, we can actually try to collect this, you know, the the the, the logs of uh, uh, same like Wireshark equivalent, you know, T-Shark log and then see uh, how these, you know, patch packets are in you know, exchange between each other. And then uh, there's a command to run it, and then um, packet flow test with the T sharp. And um, I have to talk about the uh, 
uh, hey hey is a load gen load generator written, written in uh, go language it's a very uh, very very useful and also nimble util utility to generate some uh, load test it's available in github and then um, i'm commanding i mean using a command here in the top saying that you know hey generate a load for this particular ip address which i'm trying to resolve or maybe trying to debug and then some in, in the working scenario you see that uh, when i run the wireshark uh, you see the proper response in the uh, green color section right you see the 2081 is reachable on 5000 port and then um, it's it's working as expected but in case of a non working scenario and uh, there, there's no traffic which is actually it's again timed out issue and then we can now get into a tcp dump um, the, for the same scenario how tcp dump would help us to uh, dump out the traffic between you know two client and server right so here in the bottom you see that the sudo of tcp dump and then uh, you specify the command as it here so we'll get the dump of that tcp and then uh, analyze that right and uh, we could also use the uh, cri ctl uh, to, you know to check whether the listening ports are in a proper and mapping in map to the uh, the required port which is you know uh, which has been uh, looked from outside and there is an another utility i have used here it's a sudo ns center and that would also tell us that you know whether the connections can be established from outside to the inside cluster and by the way these all these commands are running from the individual machines or in the uh, the, the particular uh, one of the one of the agent nodes and finally we reach to the application core right so we started somewhere outside and we layer after layer we reach to the particular application in the application code we see that the host has been set as a 0.0.0.0 right uh, that's been kind of you know, one of the listening port inside that application code and uh, by the way this, this is how the flask i mean this is a a template a flask code i we copied i mean I copied from the internet and just put it for a sake you know for troubleshooting and um, this is how the application code looks like but when we get into the docker file uh, when we create for the uh, for the flask you know we when you create a docker file this is how it looks like right so for the working file and uh, we are uh, injecting with the uh, parameters you know dash dash host of zero 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 but in the non-working scenario uh, it's been hard coded with 127 maybe uh, the non-working scenario might work with them uh, with the developer in the development environment but when we move to the kubernetes world we are forcing to work on 127 that is the issue we are uh, you know we we were able to uh, find out from this whole discovery so so underlying i mean in a nutshell and uh, the dash dash host which has been set as uh, 127 which was actually uh, not worked as expected but when we change back to uh, 0.0 which means that flexibility in you know uh, assigning some ip address from the host uh, we are not actually forcing any ip address right we are just saying uh, free ip address i mean uh, uh, free to pick from the host right so uh, this actually i mean left side worked properly and then right side was actually failing that is the issue here which we troubleshoot all the way and uh, we could also look at you know uh, whether it's a listening in the uh, right ip and address i mean this is just a command i put it for uh, useful sake right that click uh, i see i mean uh, cri ctl inspect uh, that's a command and template i think you will find it in the um, uh, the slide at which you get it later the key takeaway from out of this right so the see the way we have to approach this uh, there are two ways you can actually uh, start troubleshooting right so, uh, we always start from uh, top to bottom approach top is nothing but uh, we look at in the uh, portal respective cloud provider portal and then we try to debug one after the other but once if you are familiar with this concept you can actually do the reverse also but uh, see we have been you know maybe uh, we found that the troubleshooting from bottom to top layer is the most convenient or maybe most useful to isolate some of this issue issue because the the easiest thing is like top to bottom right you look at from the azure portal or maybe a respective cloud provider portal load balancer nsg uh, that's anybody can do but some of the hard issues right you have to start from the bottom to top stack uh, so that you know you'll be able to do and uh, at the end of the day the uh, kubernetes are the overlay networking concept which you discussed it's all uh, it's all built on uh, ip tables and the routing rules and um, that's what you know uh, don't get uh, uh, you know scared of maybe are afraid to talk about this or learn more about it and um, in the process of elimination start from the start to high level you know so you start with route tables um and nsgs and the general networking routing issues or uh, if you wanted to follow up the high level uh, approach uh, start from the uh, kernel or maybe uh, ssh into the node and then you know uh, go to the 
top top view as well some of the tools i found are maybe uh, it's been used internally to uh, uh, we see you know um, it's used for troubleshooting and i found that useful to share it here uh, and kubectl i know uh, you must be knowing about some of the kubectl troubleshooting commands and as such into the uh, respective cloud provider uh, provider agent nodes and uh, by the way it's not recommended to it's not advised to uh, always uh, ssh into the nodes unless if there is a troubleshooting requirement right and uh, we strongly discourage you know changing anything in the nodes and uh, because it's it's like at the end of the day these are like a temporal nodes right so if the node goes down we'll get another node so don't try to customize anything in the nodes and make use of the respective providers uh, load balancer insights uh, that will get uh, some kind of you know clues to uh, uh, nail down you know what what's goes wrong inside then uh, these are like a five commands you know uh, uh, cri ctl and ns enter um, and then to uh, troubleshoot effectively let's say tcb dump or uh, tcb dump was in uh, in a windows where i am in windows world which has been now ported to linux also and uh, there are other tools also system internal tools if you look at uh, system internal tools by mark resnovic was uh, there are like 30 plus r tools mostly built for windows has been now ported back to windows i mean sorry linux world as an um, so, so you will find the uh, some of the good benefits from uh, uh, system internal tools going to Linux world, and one of them is the TCP dump. And T Shark is nothing but the Wireshark equivalent in the command line, and LSOft is the file open, you know, to check whether the files are opened or not. And that's all about it. And uh, I know it's a it's a kind of a quick uh, run through, and uh, but I'm sure that you will enjoy when you when you start uh, debugging line by line, or maybe uh, uh, the commands as in the uh, and the, describing the slides and uh, if you have any questions reach out to me and uh, the slides i will share when we post this conference i'll share it in the uh, the bottom of the handle right so you can uh, take a look at it if you have any questions let me know and uh, yeah